This morning's message is titled, Ready or Not, Here I Come. Ready or not, here I come. My usher, you might be dismissed. Scripture has been read. There's no reason to go back and look again. But I want you to know that church, we are living in some very perilous times. And things have been going on. I don't need to share with you what they are. You've seen them. You've heard about them. There have been things that going on in recent times that are just unimaginable. And I'm sure if you were like many, you probably said to yourself, well, could it get any worse? Father against son, mother against daughter, brother against brother, sister against sister, crime all around us. And then what was once unimaginable became the imaginable. The crown virus came upon us, better known as COVID-19. And then all of a sudden, when you thought it could not get any worse, it indeed gets worse. And we are all sent to our homes to be safe and secure. In fact, the entire planet had been placed on lockdown. After millions and millions of sermons by the men and the women of God who shared with the people of God that God has a plan for your life. And indeed, God does have a plan for your life, my brothers and sisters. But what has been lost is that they don't talk about it and speak on it much, but Satan has a plan for your life as well. Yes. Don't be confused by God has got a plan and that's it. That's all there is to it. No, my brothers and sisters, the church got caught up in the dangling of the shiny thing. And they took their eyes off the cross. Churches, they just stopped preaching about the deceiver. And people were no longer hearing the word that Satan is indeed seeking whom he can destroy. In a relentless attempt to take your soul. The two greatest lies that Satan ever spoke to mankind was one, there is no God. And the other lie is that you have time to get saved. You can get saved tomorrow. Well, my brothers and sisters, I stand before you today to let you know that tomorrow never comes. Because tomorrow becomes today. So don't put off until tomorrow that which you can do today. Because while the churches were enjoying comfortable Christianity, coming to church and, and being entertained, their minds were taken off the real culprit. Why they were being shown the shiny thing. God created man in his own image. And what that means is that we have free will. In fact, in Genesis, in the third chapter, one first chapter, in the 17th verse, he says, let us create man in our own image. In his image created he him, male and female. Created he them. So it's not as if we look 
and the appearance that we share is like God. We don't look like God. We are all independent in that respect. But what it is is that God has given us all free will, the power to choose. Salvation is a choice. That is the image of God that each and every one of us possess. And I don't have to tell you about it. You know what happened way, way back in the Garden of Eden. Satan is a manipulator, my brothers and sisters. And he manipulated the mind of that young woman in the garden. It was not the fruit that he manipulated. The fruit was always there. God had created the fruit. It was her mind that he had manipulated. And what he did when he manipulated her mind was he showed her the shiny thing and they took their mind off of God. Ready or not, here I come. He's the master of destruction, the prince of darkness, disguised as an angel of light. Satan has got a plan to deceive and to steal and to destroy. And church, we have got to get our eyes back on crosses and in the the gospel on the Savior. John in the 10th chapter, in the 10th verse says, The thief cometh not but to seek and to steal and to kill. But I cometh that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus has got a plan for our lives, and during this time is a good time to to reflect upon what the Lord is saying. It wasn't the virus that Satan uh, created. Satan did not create the the coronavirus, COVID-19. Satan manipulated the mind of the scientist that he would even conceive of such an evil. He's done it before, and he'll do it again. Don't think that that Satan is not alive and is not well, and is not moving about, manipulating the minds of the people. I thank God. I stopped by this morning to tell you that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, church. So the time is not now to run and hide in fear because in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, the gospel says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Glory to God. Thank God for a sound mind. A mind that stayed on Jesus. Looking to him for all things. Get it straight, my beloved. Satan is the author of confusion. He is breeding distrust and paranoia in the church. Think about it. He has come to seek, steal, and destroy, and now is the time for us to realize that God is still seated on the throne. And what is happening now is that it's a great separation. It is no longer about consumer Christianity. God is separating the wheat from the chaff, the sheep from the goats. People have gotten so accustomed to the prosperity message. So tell me, how can you expect to fight an enemy that you have not been training for. The Revelator John speaks in Revelations 12 and 9, he calls Satan the great dragon. Now, tell me how can you fight a dragon when you've laid down the full armor of God and you have not prepared to face him head on? Get ready, get ready, get ready, church. The time is now. It is written that he who watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. 
But let me tell you, church, he that comes to destroy Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. Your enemy, Satan, is out to get you. And when you are sleeping in your bed and thinking that you are cuddling nice and cozy and dreaming sweet dreams, counting sheep, Satan is busy. He's busy concocting a, a scheme and a plan to catch you at a weak moment, even in your sleep. Take the pastor's word for it. I am not exempt from the assaults of the enemy. I've been, I've been attacked by the enemy in my sleep. I find myself on some occasions waking up in the middle of the night wondering, did that just happen? Is it real? And I have to take pause and say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Got to be mindful. Church, you got to have a, a scripture uh, to put on your lips at a time like that because when Satan comes and you can't attack him with the, your physical body, you need to have a word. At the name of Jesus, demons flee. They tremble. They're afraid of even the name of Jesus. So, so I, I, I would... I would report to you that when all else fails, saints, if you can't think of nothing else to say, just say, Jesus, oh, Jesus, 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 and Satan will flee from you. God has got a plan for your life, and it's time to stop playing church, and it's time to get serious about God and his gospel. I'm not worried about COVID-19. I know that this is only the beginning. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men what's coming next, y'all. Now, this was the unimaginable. This was something you had not seen coming. And it, and it reminded me, I thought about it while I was meditating on this service. I said, now, you know, to, to put it in a parable sense, like Jesus often spoke to the people in a, in a way that they could understand. Imagine yourself at the beach, standing in the waves, and then a wave comes along and knocks you over. And, and when you finally get yourself on your feet and, and start wiping the water from your eyes and, and from your mouth and from your nose, before you get done, just about the time you get your sight back, here comes a bigger wave. And it doesn't just knock you over. It slams you to the shore. So what we have seen, my brothers and my sisters, is the first wave. This is not it. This is not what some may think it is. This is not what some may think that you think it is. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, this is only the beginning. These are the times. And I'm not, a, I'm not prophesying. I'm not, I'm not trying to say I'm, I'm, I'm John the Revelator. I'm just saying that th it, it gets worse. And for you to think, well, I didn't imagine this. Just imagine what you cannot imagine. God is at work. Don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today. Church, ready or not, here I come. You see, those that have found themselves fleeing from this pandemic and this time, what we have experienced is this. We have celebrated the saddest Resurrection Sunday of many of our lifetimes. Satan has made an attempt to crucify my Savior yet again. Those are just words printed on a page. Nothing to get excited about here. No one calling, Hosanna, Hosanna. Save us, son of David, Hosanna. No cries were that were, were spoken this, this Resurrection Sunday. I know because I, I spoke to, to the streamers then. The churches were closed and things like this is when Satan comes alive and he's, he says he was just a man. He died like any other man. And we must remember, church, that's Death excites Satan. 
in, in the book of Matthew in the 12th chapter, 21st verse, he's uh, called Beelzebub. He comes by many names. Beelzebub, which is the Lord of devils. He is the, the prince of devils and the Lord of flies. Imagine, can you imagine? The prince of devils and the Lord of flies. And, and what attracts flies more than the smell of something dying or something dead? See, Satan gets excited about the paranoia, about the death of the church and, and those that are afraid to come back and those that have thought they've, they've got to find another way to serve God. There's only one way. Jesus is the only way. Seek ye first the kingdom, and all these things will be added unto you. I see a great revival coming, church. My beloved, Jesus has given it all for us. He committed the ultimate gift of, of sacrifice for each and every one of us. John 15 and 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, than he who would lay down his life for a friend. My God, my God, greater love hath no man than this, than he who would lay down his life. Jesus paid it all. We've been bought with a price. And it's a new day, saints. What Satan meant for evil, God intended for good. Where, where evil abounded, grace abounded all the more. And now what the nice-to-haves that soon and quickly became the must-haves, have just as quickly become excess. The prosperity, this shiny thing, we, were, we took our eyes off the cross because we were watching the, the, the must-haves, the need-to-haves. It was all just excess. The Lord told Moses, and I think about it from time to time, when Moses went up on the Mount Sinai, and he sat with God. The Bible says he was there 40 days and 40 nights. But God spoke to Moses, and he told Moses, I am a jealous God, and thou shalt have no other God before me. I'm a jealous God. I'm the God that brought you out of bondage. And if anybody here is like me, God brought you out of bondage. I've been through some things. And every time I went through something, it felt like COVID-19. I never knew if it was going to end, if it was going to be a happy ending to it. But I trusted God because I, I knew as a young man that I had a Savior. So I cast my cares. The Bible says when you cast something, it means you laid upon. I cast my cares at the foot of the cross, my brothers and sisters. Ready or not, here I come. Even through this, Jesus is saying, lo, I am with you always. We are weathering a storm. Even you and I today are weathering the same storm as consumer Christians are weathering as well. The difference is, the Christian is finding out now that he's going through the storm on a battleship. I'm walking through this storm on a battleship. And those part-time Christians, they're going through on a rowboat. They're experiencing some troubled waters. But God is with me no matter what the weather is. How do I know this? I'm glad you asked. Because when the, the disciples were on the ship and Jesus had told them, let us go over to the other side. When the storm came, he was able to say, peace, be still. The same God that rode with the disciples on the troubled sea of Galilee is the same God that is traveling with you and I, my brothers and sisters, as we journey through this weary land. Paul writes in Romans 5 and 23, and not only this so, but for glory and tribulations also, not for only this, 
but for glory in tribulations also. That knowing that tribulation bring, breedeth patience, bringeth forth patience. Tribu hard times, no, we had to wait this thing out. There was no snap of the finger. Tribulations bringeth forth patience. But I like what John says in, in 16 and 33. He says, and these things have I spoken unto you about me. That you might have peace in this world. I like it. See, Christ, Christ don't mix his words. The Bible, the Bible tells it like it is. Jesus said, in this world. We didn't realize the, the, the planet was so big till they put us on lockdown. And then God had to step in. And he tells me to be reminded what I tell you in John 15 and 33. In this world, there will be tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. My, my, my. I've overcome the world. Jesus said, look, no matter what you're going through, I don't care if the whole world is going through it. And if we're all going through it all at the same time, in this world there will be tribulations, but be of good cheer. Because I have overcome the world. The time has come, my brothers and sisters, that when this virus is over, the season for Sunday only faith will be finished. Consumers have been forced to show what faith really looks like going, when going to church is not uh, available to them. All those consumer friendly churches. See, now is the day has arrived for all uh, so-called believers to think afresh about their salvation. When now that you can't go to church, you must be able to not just talk the talk. You must be able to walk the walk. And people need to see what does Christianity look like in your life? What does Christianity look like during the week? See, people have grown accustomed to coming to church on Sunday and seeing the shiny thing and realizing that if I make a small donation, then I will be entertained for an hour and then I can go home and I'm good till next Sunday. You need to think afresh, because ready or not, here I come. Satan is, 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 is showing us and revealing to us that time is winding down. No longer uh, are we going to be able about just talking about it. We have to walk about it. And the same painful walk that our Savior took, that day he carried his cross up Calvary's mountain carried his cross. The Bible says, if any man come after me, let him pick up his cross daily and follow me. Jesus was saying, this ain't a, I'm not, he didn't come to, I didn't come to give you a prosperity message. I came to tell you, church, there's going to be some difficult times on this journey. We ain't going to be laughing and singing Kumbaya on our way to heaven. You have got to be tried and tested. He told you to put on the full armor of God. And if you are not in training, if you are not staying in the word and not studying the word, you will not be shod with anything. Satan knows whether you're prepared for warfare. Look at, look at poor Eve. She thought she had it going on, but Satan is able. You don't know what Satan has in Door. But Jesus, my Savior, took it upon himself to step down out of glory and make himself flesh so that he would understand what it was like to be a man, what it was like to suffer hunger, what it was like to suffer rejection. What it was like when people would turn their back on the gospel. I, I, so I don't count myself a big deal because I look at it like this. They walked away from Jesus. If he could not convince them to turn around and, and repent of their sins, I'm just a man. But I've come and I've spent time and God says, I will equip you with what you need. 
You are not responsible for anything but the seed, preacher. I will take care of the soil. But you say you, you want to respond to the call. I was talking with a, a, a member of this church just the other night, and brother told me that not that long ago he had trouble in his way, and Satan was attacking him day in and day out. And his life was in shambles. And I don't, I don't use him to make an example of him because uh, Pastor Billy D can make an example of his own life. I got some darkness in my past as well. But what he told me was relevant for the word today because he said there were times in his life and I, I could identify with that and maybe someone else can identify as well. And if you don't, you don't get anything else from the message, hear ye this, that when God hears your prayer, your fervent prayer to dear Lord, take my life. Just take my life. I've been there, church. I know what it's like to have to ask God, I, I don't care if I die. I don't even care if I die. Just, just take my life. But what the brother shared with me was, was this. Not only did God take his life, but he gave him a new one. Maybe, maybe, let me see, maybe you didn't hear what I said. Not only did God take his life, but he gave him a new one. Yeah, that, that's a good place to stick a praise, church. God took my life and gave me a new life. And with the life that I've been given, I can do like my Savior. And I'm ready to carry my cross up Calvary's hill. Corona virus has shown me that no weapon for me against me shall prosper. And if I carry my cross, I can do like my Savior and, and, and fight the good fight of faith. Stand before the people of God, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, because they tell me that on that Friday afternoon, he hung on that very cross that he carried. He hung there and he died. No greater love has any man than this, he who would give and lay down his life for a friend, my Savior, carried the cross, hung on the cross, and died. Ready or not, church, here I come. Yes. Because after he died, they took him down off the cross, and they placed him in a borrowed grave. Bible tells me that he laid there all night, Friday night. My, my, my. Laid there all day Saturday. All night, Saturday night. My, my, my. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Because early on Sunday morning, early that Sunday morning, my Savior got up with all power in heaven and earth was in his hand. Ready or not, church, here I come. The time for consumer Christianity is over. The time for playing church is over. It's time to get serious about God and to get serious about the gospel. Take your eyes off the gifts and place them on the gift giver because God is faithful. Look what he's brought us through. Look how he's brought us, not some of the way, church. He brought us all the way through. When the whole world was, was hiding in fear and running in fear, God said, keep your eyes on the cross. Cast your burdens on me. I will carry you. I will sustain you. Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. So church, the time to, to get serious about church and the gospel and where you are in the body of Christ. See, Satan tried to destroy the body of Christ, but the coronavirus has only proved one thing to this preacher, that the church will last forever. Because you, my brothers and sisters, you are the church. This is just the building. And what God has shown me, that the church will be here long after the coronavirus. Nothing will stop the church from going forward. We are all the church. We are the body of Christ. And the body of Christ will live for all eternity. And all the people of God said amen.